Welcome to another episode of Mike's Money Picks. Today on the podcast, we are continuing our all 32 NFL team previews for the upcoming 2023 fantasy football season. And today we are starting our last division, probably the worst division of football, the NFC South. And we are headlining it with the defending division champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, whose offense is going to look a whole lot different this year with Baker Mayfield under center as opposed to Tom Brady. So we're going to break that down and talk about where you should be drafting all these Tampa Bay Bucks players in redraft, dynasty, and best ball leagues. This is our last division in the series. So if you missed any of the previous ones, check the links in the description. And we're going to try to get these last four done before the season starts and also Um, My wife is currently 39 weeks pregnant, so I'm going to try to get all these four done um, before uh, the baby arrives. That way, you know, they're all done before the season starts. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It really shows me a lot of support. It helps me a lot. You'll be notified when new episodes drop. If you're listening to the podcast on audio, please rate and review. If you're interested in signing up for any DFS sites, sportsbook sites, Head on over to signupexpert.com slash Mike's Picks. You will get the best promo codes and offers available. We're going to talk about best ball on this show here today. Underdog is a best ball site that is on Sign Up Expert. And for all my full rankings for all 32 NFL teams, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Mike's Money Picks. Let's start talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, so before we talk about where their offense is heading in 2023, let's break down where the Bucs offense ranked in 2022. So in 2022, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ranked 15th in the league in yards per game and 25th in points per game. No team in the NFL last year ran more pass plays than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their pass rate was the highest in the league. Their rush rate was the lowest in the league. And in terms of total plays, no team called more passes, no team called fewer runs, and no team ran more total plays than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. So they were the heaviest pass team in the league, and they were the heaviest total plays team in the league. Now, of note is that Tom Brady is no longer the Buccaneers quarterback, where he had been the previous three seasons. So the question becomes now is, were they passing a lot as a result of having Tom Brady? Were they passing a result of, you know, being in these shootout type of games that they were in last year? I don't know. I know head coach Todd Bowles is a little more on the conservative side, so it would not shock me if we saw those pass rates drop a little bit. But at the same time, I don't expect the Buccaneers to be very good this season. So if they're not very good, then while that pass rate might drop because they're quarterback change, it might rise back up because of the game script if they're trailing in a lot of these games. So let's go ahead and talk about the quarterback position. So in 2022, Tom Brady finished as quarterback 12 overall and quarterback 16 in fantasy points per game. So all that passing volume, all those passing plays, and he was still only quarterback 12 overall, quarterback 16 in fantasy points per game. It's not great. It's not a good sign because what it means is, is no matter who steps into this buck starting offense, if they are not as good as Tom Brady and they're not going to see the same passing volume, then it would kind of be unreasonable to expect them to finish any better than quarterback 16 in fantasy points per game. Now, of note last year is that Brady only had three weekly top 10 finishes and only four games above 18 fantasy points. He didn't really flash you know, for any ceiling games last season. So, um, you know, kind of not the best season for, for the GOAT to retire on, but he is moving on. The new quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is going to be Baker Mayfield, former number one overall pick of the Cleveland Browns, a former starter for the Carolina Panthers last season. Last year, I was a big-time believer in the preseason of Baker Mayfield. I got that one wrong. Very wrong. Last year, in his starts for the Carolina Panthers and then the Los Angeles Rams, Baker Mayfield averaged 10.8 fantasy points per game. It's not good. In his 12 starts, he had two games above 15 fantasy points. One was week one against his former team in Cleveland, and one was against Denver on Christmas Day as a Los Angeles Ram. For his career, Baker Mayfield averages 15.2 fantasy points per game. He has never finished in the top 10 quarterbacks in fantasy points per game. He's had good seasons, like his rookie year in 2018 and you know the Browns' best year as a team in 2020, but even then, he was not a top 10 quarterback in fantasy points per game. So where does that leave us this year? Well, the Buccaneers offense should still have a large passing volume, and they still have a talented group of weapons with that receiving core and with that running back room. So Baker Mayfield, while I don't expect the same return as you know Tom Brady had last year, I don't expect him to equal that number. He should be a late-round dart throw in best ball. He's a guy you can roster in best ball, and maybe he has one or two good weeks for you. Or maybe he's a good stacking partner with Godwin Evans. I also think he's a solid waiver wire pickup in redraft leagues. I don't expect him 
to be drafted in redraft leagues. So he's a guy you can pick up and stream because he's going to be throwing the ball a lot and he's going to be thrown to a talented group. There's worse situations out there than the one that Baker Mayfield is in. I'm not drafting him right now in redraft leagues, but he's just a guy that, you know, he can be a streaming option. Who knows? Maybe if he ends up hitting it off, he can be good. But he's going to be available on the waiver wire in your redraft fantasy leagues. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the running back position. So Leonard Fournette was really good last year in, in Tampa. In fact, he's he'd been really good pretty much the entire time he was there when he kind of came over the same year Tom Brady did. So Fournette finished his running back 12 overall and running back 12 in fantasy points per game last season. And to get there, he had a 58.8% opportunity share, which ranked 20th in the league. So he wasn't a big-time workhorse back that was just seeing all these carries and this huge workload. But he did have 83 targets, which ranked 4th in the league among running backs. Tom Brady checked down the ball a lot last season, which helped out Leonard Fournette. It also helped out Rashad White, who finished 2022 as running back 36 overall and running back 42 in fantasy points per game. He did this on only a 38% opportunity share, and he earned 58 targets, which ranked 12th among running backs. So yes, you heard that correctly. The Buccaneers running backs were two of the top 12 most targeted backs in the league in the 2022 season. No team, actually one team, I'll give you a second to try to think of who it is. One team targeted running backs more time than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. Any guesses? It was the Los Angeles Chargers who were thrown to Austin Eckler all those times. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, well, you know, Brady was really old. Brady didn't have a whole lot of arm strength. What if, you know, all those checkdowns were a result of that? Well, no quarterback targeted running backs at a higher rate last season than Baker Mayfield. So... I mean, I tend to think that this running back room is going to continue to see that level of targets. So what we've seen so far is Leonard Fournette was a top 15 running back. Rashad White was a, we'll say, streaming option at the running back position. And those running backs were getting a lot of targets. Well, how does that shape up heading into this year? Well, Fournette and White together had two weeks where they both posted a top 20 finish. So there's enough workload to go around for there to be two running backs that are productive in this system. But this year, it wouldn't be Fournette and White. It would be Rashad White as the lead dog and Sean Tucker out of Syracuse, who the Bucks drafted this offseason, as the second guy in kind of the Rashad White role. So do I envision, you know, with Leonard Fournette gone, Rashad White just instantly picking up an 80% snap share and opportunity share? No, I do not. But if Rashad White gets that same about 60% snap share that Leonard Fournette had, can he finish as a top 15 running back? Absolutely. And does that mean that Sean Tucker would be a streaming option as a waiver wire pickup or a handcuff? you know, in kind of Rashad White control last season? Absolutely. So the bottom line for the Buccaneers running back room is that Rashad White, if he's able to be the workhorse that Leonard Fournette was, could easily finish as a top 20 back, if not better, because there's going to be plenty of work to go around. Sean Tucker is in the Rashad White role. He's an intriguing handcuff who should be rostered in dynasty leagues and might be available on waivers in a redraft league. He's a guy that should be drafted in best ball leagues because if Rashad White gets injured, I think he's instantly a top 25 running back. So Rashad White is my running back 22 for the 2023 season. I have him right around the likes of Kenneth Walker the third, and Miles Sanders and Isaiah Pacheco in my rankings. All right, so let's go ahead and switch gears just a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about the wide receivers. So at the wide receiver position, the Buccaneers were – Really good in fantasy last year. They finished with two top 20 wide receivers in fantasy football in the 2022 season. Mike Evans was wide receiver 17 overall and wide receiver 13 in fantasy points per game. Chris Godwin was wide receiver 19 overall and wide receiver 15 in fantasy points per game. However, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, that just means that when I go play DFS this year, you know, play on DraftKings or FanDuel, I can just go ahead and bump in Evans and Godwin and set it and forget it and I'm done. I'm getting two top 20 wide receivers. Well, not necessarily. Evans and Godwin only had one week where both of them finished as top 25 receivers. Very rarely did they both get home and hit value. It's also worth noting they were the only two top 50 fantasy wide receivers on this roster. The Bucs also did not have a top 15 fantasy tight end. So in that passing game, all of the workload was going to Evans, Godwin, and the running backs, essentially. So, Let's go ahead and break that down a little bit. So 
as is the case with a lot of the Buccaneers passing numbers so far, no buck, no no team in the NFL targeted the wide receiver position more times than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did in 2022. There were teams that targeted wide receivers at a higher rate, but not more times total because of the Bucs' insane passing volume. Tampa had 458 targets to the wide receiver position last year. 270 of those 458 targets went to Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. And both of them missed two games. So you're looking at a situation where they had about 60%, trying to do the quick math there, of the Bucks' targets to the wide receiver position, and both of them played in 85% of the season. So, you know, these guys dominated the Bucks' passing game. And when you look at the numbers a little deeper, Evans had a 19.7% target share with a very high 13.4 yard average depth of target and 31 deep targets. Chris Godwin commanded more targets. He had a 21.8% target share, but a supremely low 5.6 yard average depth of target. So the translation there, when the Bucks wanted to go deep, it was Evans. When the Bucks wanted to throw contested balls down the field, it was Evans. When they wanted to hit these little underneath routes in rhythm and in timing, it was going to Chris Godwin. Now, both of those roles are viable in fantasy football for different reasons. Godwin, because of the volume. Edward, or Evans, because of the upside of the targets that he's received. Edwins is, or Evans, why do I want to keep calling him Edwins? Evans is going to be the guy who gets the deep target, scores you the deep touchdown, and all it takes is one catch for 70 yards, and boom, all of a sudden he's hit value for the day, and he's a good play for you. So... Two other stats that I found interesting when looking up the Buccaneers wide receiver room. Mike Evans scored 21% of his season total in week 17 against the Panthers. He was the best receiver on that slate. He had over 40 fantasy points in that game. Now, also worth noting that the last season the Tampa Bay Buccaneers played without Tom Brady, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin were still there. Still there. Jameis Winston was the quarterback. Both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin were in the top five in fantasy points per game. So the translation for these two fun facts, Mike Evans, super volatile, super high upside. Both of them, very viable options, even without Tom Brady as their quarterback. Now, the bottom line for this Buccaneers wide receiver room is that even without Tom Brady throwing them the football, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin should be able to dominate the workload in this passing attack. And so I have these guys both a little bit higher than consensus just because I like the situation that they're in. You're in a high-volume passing offense with very little competition for targets. Even if it's Baker Mayfield throwing them the football, that's still a good situation to be in. And so, like I said, I have them ranked higher than consensus. I have Godwin one notch ahead of Evans because of the security that he gives you. And so I have Chris Godwin as my wide receiver 22 and Mike Evans as my wide receiver 23 for the 2023 season. All right. That does it for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2023 Fantasy Football Team Preview. If you like what you saw, hit the like button on YouTube and hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when new episodes drop. If you're listening on audio, please rate and review the podcast. It shows me a lot of support, and I really do appreciate it. If you want to try best ball or DFS or player prop sites, head on over to signupexpert.com slash Mike's Picks. You will get the best offers and promo codes available for all of those sites and full rankings for all 32 NFL teams available on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Mike's Money Picks. All right, so that does it for this episode, y'all. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Hopefully I was able to give you guys some good information on where and how to draft these Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Redraft Dynasty and Best Ball Leagues. Next up is the New Orleans Saints. Thank you guys for watching and listening, and I will see you next time.